Today is the second Sunday of Easter. Notice it's of and not after, because Easter is a season, not just one festival Sunday. A season that follows 40 long days of wilderness wandering in Lent. And it lasts for 50 days until the day of Pentecost. Because I don't know about you, but I need, I think we all need more than one day to celebrate, to mark the resurrection of our Lord Jesus the Christ. It's a day that's often called Low Sunday when fewer people come to worship. It's a day when the lilies have started to lose their bloom. The flowers are browning around the edges. The ears have been long eaten off of the chocolate bunny rabbits. Our Easter best are sitting at the cleaners. And the impact of all of those alleluias that we didn't say or sing during the somber days of Lent, well, they they kind of fade and get normative again. And we get back into business as usual. There's no question about it. We know how to throw a good party. We know how to celebrate the resurrection. We know how to have a great Easter worship gathering. We know how to have a wonderful meal and families over and eggs found and baskets given. We know it as an event. But do we know how to live Easter each day? Do we know how to live Easter as part of our way of life? The way of life for those of us who follow Jesus is a life filled with his peace and presence. In today's gospel, the risen Jesus appears to the disciples. He breathes the Holy Spirit on into and through them, and grants them the gift of peace. And just in case we don't catch it the first time, he does it three times. Even amid doubt and questions, we experience the resurrection when we gather on Sunday mornings. We experiencing it, experience it hearing and singing the good and gracious word of God. We experience it tasting and seeing the very presence of God's word in bread and wine, becoming what we receive, the very body of Christ. And we experience resurrection in our everyday lives when we get up in the morning splashing and washing in water. It's showering over us as God's blessings, reminding us of faith and forgiveness that we receive in baptism as Mary Jacqueline did at eight o'clock this morning. We go through our everyday lives remembering that we are loved because God so loved the world that God gave Jesus to live and to die for us. Throughout the coming Sundays of Easter, the first two readings will be from the Acts of the Apostles and the first letter of Peter. In the book of Acts, we hear about the struggles and the joys of the early church. And in Peter's first letter, we learn that even as the early Christians were persecuted and struggled with their faith, they still proclaimed the resurrection. They and we, each and every day, remembering our washing, remembering how much we are loved, Rejoice in the new birth of Easter. Rejoice and live into the hope that we receive in baptism. And recall that echo heard on Easter morning, Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed, Alleluia. This book of Acts replaces our Hebrew scripture during this Easter tide. We hear about these first converts to the Jesus movement. We hear how Peter preaches the gospel, telling all of those that are gathered that Jesus, who obediently went to his death, did so according to God's plan, and that he was raised by God from the dead. Peter uses Hebrew scripture, quoting from Psalm 16, reminding and telling us that God will not abandon us, 
God will show us the path of life with Jesus the Messiah as our guide. Jesus, who though crucified is risen. Jesus, our guide who walks with us each and every day. If we keep reading the Acts passage from today, we get a preview of next week's. And I thought about reading it, but we'll wait. But because we had a baptism today, I'll mention it. The people, when they hear the good news, it says that they were cut to their heart. And so they ask Peter and the other apostles gathered, what should we do? How should we live each day? And Peter says to them, repent, turn yourself and your life around and come to the waters. Be baptized. He baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ so that your sins might be forgiven, so that you receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For this promise, this promise is for you. This promise is for your children, for your grandchildren, and for all who are far away. This promise of God's is for everyone whom the Lord God calls to God's self. Peter teaches and encourages them saying, save yourselves from this corrupt generation. And so all of those who heard the message were baptized and they devoted themselves as we promised to do in our baptismal covenant to the teaching and fellowship to breaking of bread, and to prayer. This is what happened this morning at 8 o'clock as little tiny Mary Jacqueline was brought to these waters. Her parents, her godparents, her grandparents, and all the witnesses at that service, and we, by extension, as part of the body of Christ, God has gathered as all saints. We promise to do those things to live into our baptismal covenants, to live into the call of God, to participate fully in this thing called the Jesus movement, this messy thing called church. We do that by sharing God's word, by living and being in community, by receiving bread and wine and sharing it with everyone who comes to this table, by praying for the needs the needs of the newly baptized, the needs of all who have been baptized, the needs of all of God's creation. But this baptismal covenant can be challenging. It's why when the epistle was written, it was written to encourage the baptized believers who were experiencing hardship and suffering because of their faith in Christ. The letter opens by blessing God for the living hope we have through the resurrection of Jesus the Christ. Even in the midst of, and maybe especially in those times of difficulty, those challenging people and places that we encounter in our everyday lives. We're reminded that it's because of God's great mercy we have been given new life. We have hope hope that we might feel, or a hope that we're called to live into. And that's through the cross of Christ. More importantly, the epistle tells us that we are given an inheritance. An inheritance, not one that has to go through probate. Not one that your siblings are going to fight and argue with you over. An inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading. Beloveds, we're given the very gift of salvation in our faithfulness and in our doubt. And Although we may not have seen Jesus in the flesh, we love him. And even though we might not see him in front of us right now, we can still believe in him and rejoice. And we rejoice because of that inheritance the promise of life and the very salvation of our souls. So when you feel like life 
itself is perishing. When all that you are and have seems to be defiled or violated, when life itself appears to be slipping out from under you or fading away, we can know that Jesus and the good news and hope of new life, of being loved, no matter where we are, no matter who we are, no matter what, we are loved because of our inheritance. We are loved permanently. And our eternal salvation and our presence and peace with Jesus the Christ each and every day is a promise that does not fade. A friend of mine this week said that this inheritance is unique in our world. In our consumer society, things are fleeting. We use them up and toss them aside. And this person said these words, Jesus is not like Snapchat. Now you may not have a clue what Snapchat is all about, but talk to somebody under the age of 18 or so. Snapchat is the latest in social media platforms. It is a way of sending pictures and words and feelings and images in the heat of the moment. You send it, it's seen, and poof, it goes out into that internet somewhere. So people are open and raw and honest. They send stuff they wouldn't want you as their parents to see or to know. There are pros and cons to Snapchat, but it echoes the way we live our life. We say what we want when we want to do it, and we do what we want when we want to do it, and the heck with the rest of the world or the person in front of us. We snap our fingers and we want the world to be our way. And sometimes we think that our God is that way, fleeting, disappearing, not tangible, out there in the internet somewhere. Jesus is not like Snapchat. God's promises and our promised inheritance is permanent. It is immovable. It does not go away. It doesn't do that because because God promised that because we are baptized into a death like his, we will surely share in a resurrection like his. This week, as I do every month, I gather with colleagues from around the state. We begin with prayer and we study God's word and we check in with one another to see how, how life is going. One colleague at the end paused. And he decided to share the seriousness of his wife's heart problems and the sense of peace that she has been experiencing lately as she and he enter into the last chapters of her life, full of uncertainty and pain, full of grief. Tears filled his eyes as he reminisced about their years of marriage together. He started to exude a confidence, a glow almost, and a small smile brightened his face when he said, but she knows and loves her Lord. And she knows and loves her Lord that will not leave her side. Jesus breathes on and into our lives, giving us presence and peace. See, faith is a gift from God. It is never lost. We may not want it. We may hide it. We may cast it aside. We ourselves may wander far off. And we may tarnish that gift of God's peace and presence. But God takes it and us and refines it. 
This God of ours is constantly, stubbornly present in our lives, unconditionally loving us, gifting us with faith, gifting us with forgiveness, gifting us with life itself found in these waters and on that cross. Our lives are filled with second chances, with forgiveness, with God intervening and saving us from ourselves, and all that breaks and separates us from God. God blesses us. God showers us and washes over our old doubting and sinful selves, giving us new life revealed in God's time. Whether it's at the end of our lives or whether it's at the beginning of a new phase in our lives. Beloveds, God gives you, children of God, a promised inheritance of peace, of indescribable and glorious joy. Gives it to you. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed.